Okay, welcome back to the class on a power semiconductor type. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the peak power recovery speed control of electric motor. Here, there are two methods are there. One is a Sergius spray. The second one is a Kramer spray. So this is the circuit diagram for the static Sergius spray. This is a three lines are represented in the PPS supply. The induction motor is represented by the two circuits. The outer circuit is nothing but a starter. The inner circuit is nothing but a rotor. This is the rotor resistance starter. The rotor is connected to the rotor resistance starter through the TPST switch. The rotor winding also will be connected to the diode rectifier circuit. Nothing but a the rotor voltage will be rectified to DC voltage. Again, that DC voltage will be converted to the AC voltage by means of a line commutated inverter. This is nothing but a rectifier. So why you are calling as a line commutator inverter means you are maintaining the firing angle of this converter is more than the 90 degrees and less than the 100 degrees. So the power is passing from this VD2 to subject. Here we have taken the transformer. So why you have taken this transformer means to match the VD2 voltage to the VD1. VD1 is nothing but the voltage given by the diode rectifier to VD2 is nothing but the voltage given by the Phase control This is the DC link inductor. The main function of this DC link inductor is that it reduces the ripples in a DC link current. Now we are going to see how we are going to operate this Serbia state. So whenever we are given a three phase supply, the rotating field is creating. Whenever the rotating field is creating from the scatter winding, there is a rate of change of such linkage with the rotor conductor. The voltage will be induced in the rotor conductor. The current is passing through the rotor conductor. So whenever current carrying conductor plays in magnetic field, every conductor experiencing a force. Collectively, the torque is developed by the shaft. So the rotor will also will be rotating in the same direction of the shaft. To limit the starting current, here we have taken the rotor resistance. At the time of starting, we are keeping the TPS disk which is connected to the external resistance. So the starting current taken by the induction motor will be decreases. Once the speed of motor will be is increases, then we will open this TPS. Suppose we, if you want to control the induction motor speed, then this is open. Now the rotor is connected to the diode rectifier circuit. In the rotor, the sinusoidal power is available. That is converted into the DC power. This converter will be operating as inverter. So the whatever the power is available to the DC link, that we can send to the supply through the transformer by controlling the firing angle of this second converter. Suppose if you take the alpha 2 is the firing angle of this converter, if you take that value is equal to 90 degrees, then the no power is sent to the supply. If it goes on increasing that value, there is some amount of voltage will be available here, so that some amount of power will be sent to the supply. Suppose if we maintain the firing angle of this converter is 180 degrees, the more amount of voltage is available, so the more amount of power also will be sent to the supply, so the speed of the motor will be running at a very less. In this manner, by controlling the firing angle of the second converter, we can control how much voltage available here, which controls the, the power injected into the supply, which affecting the speed of the induction. The main advantage of this method is that we are not wasting the rotor power. Again, we are giving back to the supply. The power factor of the induction motor will be increased, even though if we run the induction motor at a low speed. Small m is nothing but a, it is the ratio between the stator to the rotor transition. Here m is nothing but a, it is the ratio between the primary winding to the secondary winding. V is nothing but a supply line voltage. Now we are going to find out what is the expression for the VD1. Next, what is the expression for the VD2. If you apply the KVL in this loop, we are getting the VD1 plus VD2 equal to 0. So, VD1 equal to minus VD2. So in that manner, we are going to do some of the mathematical analysis on this drive. The average output voltage given by the diode express circuit VD1 equal to 3 root 6 by pi SV by N, where S is nothing but a slip of induction motor, V is nothing but a line voltage, N is nothing but a trans ratio between the scatter to the rotor. The average output voltage given by the second converter, 3 root 6 by pi. S into V by M cos alpha, where M is nothing but a trans ratio of a transformer, which is kept at a second 
కనబట్ట వీ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ లైన్ వోల్టేజ్ సేమ్ వోల్టేజ్ వీ హావ్ గివెన్ టు దాటర్ ఆఫ్ ఇండక్షన్ మోటర్ ఎస్ వల్ ఎస్ ప్రైమరీ మైనింగ్ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మర్ ద సెకండ్ కన్వర్టర్ ఈజ్ కంట్రోల్ కన్వర్టర్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ దవరేజ్ ఆఫ్ టూ వోల్టేజ్ ఇస్ ఫంక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ఫా వీ నో దట్ విడి వన్ ప్లస్ విడి టూ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో నో విడి వన్ ఈక్వల్ టు మైనస్ విడి టూ సబ్క్యూట్ వాల్యూస్ ఆఫ్ విడి వన్ అండ్ విడి టూ సో ఫైనల్ యూఆర్ గెటింగ్ ద ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ ఫర్ సిక్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు మైనస్ ఎన్ బై ఎం కాస్ ఆల్ఫా నో యూర్ టేక్ ఎన్ బై ఎం యాజ్ ఏ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ కాన్స్టెంట్ by probably selecting the value of a we can select the range of a speed of induction motor by for a perfect computation of the second converter we are restricting the firing angle of second converter to the 165 degree so the slip can be vary from 0 to 0.966a so how do you got this value mean suppose if we take a alpha equal to 90 degrees so we are getting this value suppose if we take alpha equal to 165 degrees in this place then we are getting this one the approximate selection a is required for the speed range of the drive can be achieved these are the speed torque factors etc that gets by right? alpha equal to 90 as the alpha is increasing more than the 90 degrees the speed of the motor will be decreased so this all these graphs will be fixed down suppose if you want to drive the induction motor at a low speed the diode rectifier circuit that voltage is maximum so vd1 maximum equal to v into s maximum by n where s maximum is nothing but a slip of induction motor is maximum when the slip of the induction motor is maximum only the rotor voltage is maximum if the rotor voltage is maximum only the vd1 becomes a maximum the s maximum is a slip at a lowest speed now we we are restricted to the firing angle of the second converter to 165 degrees m is chosen such that the inverter voltage has a value of vd1 maximum when alpha equal to 165 degrees now how we are going to select the trans ratio of a transformer means that will be selected based off on the at lowest speed of a drive so substitute all the values here this is vd1 this is vd2 equal to 0 So V by M cos 165 degrees plus V SM by N equal to 0. If you find the value of M, that is equal to minus N cos 165 degrees by S max. Now substitute the value of cos 165 degrees, finally you are getting a minus 0.966 N S max. So the rating of a transformer is highly depending upon how much speed range you want from the serbius drive right? that is controlling the maximum slip which is also depending upon the chatter to the rotor trans ratio of a induction the choice of m ensures the inverter operation at highest firing angle and lowest speed giving a highest power factor and lowest reactive power at low speed so the power factor will be improved for all speed now we are going to find out the how much is the torque developed in the induction motor of a serbius drive so to find that one first of all we are representing the chatter parameters to the rotor this is the chatter resistance refer to the rotor this is the chatter reactance refer to the rotor this is the rotor reactance this is the rotor resistance this is the chatter voltage refer to the rotor this is rotor voltage this is the equal circuit of induction motor which refer to the rotor now we are going to refer this this circuit into the dc link because after the rotor the diode rectifier circuit is there after that the dc link is there when you are going to transfer this parameters to the dc link this reactance value becomes a zero now these two resistance will be added already we know that when you are transferring the dc link parameters to the rotor that value will be multiplied by the 0.5 suppose if you are transferring the parameters from the rotor to the dc link that will be multiplied by the two so these two values so this is the equivalent circuit of a serbius drive with refer to the dc link two sum of these two quantities plus rd nothing but a resistance of a inductor this is the vd1 this is vd2 so why we got this one means 
and you're going to change these parameters from the rotor to the DC link, this magnitude will be doubled by two times. Now the current passing in the circuit is equal to VD1 plus VD2 by this resistance. ID equal to VD1 plus VD2 by 2 F into RS dash plus RR plus RD. We know the expression for the VD1 and VD2. Substitute those values in the numerator. So finally, you're getting the 3 by 5 root 6 V F by N plus cos alpha by M whole divided by 2 S RS dash plus RR plus R. This is the DC link current. If the rotor cop loss is neglected, we are getting this expression that is F into VG plus VD2 into ID. So the mechanical power developed in induction motor that is equal to VD2 into ID by S. Then the torque developed in induction motor T equal to mechanical power developed by the synchronous speed of induction motor in radians. We are getting a VD2 into ID by F into omega. So in this manner, we can able to find out how much is the torque developed in the circuit. So thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always available to answer all your questions.